Hi everybody. Today I want to talk to you about stress and feeling overwhelmed either by life or by suffering. You know, I know a lot of good people right now are suffering tremendously. I've been feeling overwhelmed lately and though, you know, that old saying, misery loves company, um, it helps me to know that I am not the only one going through a struggle right now, but at the same time, it is my prayer and my wish that God relieve my friends and family of their suffering and that he take away some of my burden so that I can um, stand up straight <laughs> again and face tomorrow. There is a beautiful old hymn that goes something like, Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I have no fear. Because I know that he holds the future, life is worth living just because he lives. It's that resurrection promise that we must hold on to that when all of the suffering and strife and stress in this world comes to an end, eventually, whether it be Jesus' return or our own death, we will be relieved of this stress and suffering. Um, I'm friends on Facebook with Father Robert Cooper, and he often posts things that are just what I need to hear at the time that I need to hear it. And it's funny because he and I have never met. Anyway, I've been feeling quite overwhelmed lately um, with work, with things at home, with the way things are in the world, um, with the way things are in the church, and feeling that I am helpless to do anything about any of those things except for to pray. And sometimes, um, shame on me, but I sometimes feel like maybe praying is just not enough. And anyway, Father Robert posted this today. This trial is refining you. This test is maturing you. This valley is preparing you. This delay is disciplining you. And God is working for you. All affirming quotes uh, um, or little nuggets that we need to hold on to. You know, this morning when I was praying, another church song came to my mind and it's um, let us build the city of God um, awake from your slumber arise from your sleep a new day is dawning for all those who weep and um, I was glad those words came to me because to be perfectly honest um, I have felt so overwhelmed lately that probably one day a week I have a little pity party, have a good cleansing cry, uh, cry out to the Lord from the depths of my being. And then the other, you know, days of the week, I, some days are better and some days I'm just muddling through. Um, but anyway, having a good cry and crying out to God from the bottom of your heart um, can can also be very healing. You know, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father, when we get to the line that says, on earth, we pray that your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We are asking, we're praying for the reign of Christ. Um, on earth, the uh, triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. We're asking God's will to be done on earth that just as it is in heaven. 
So just knowing that we are praying for that every day should give us some help and some consolation. You know, sometimes I've learned one thing, and that is when I'm feeling overwhelmed, it does no good whatsoever to keep saying to myself, I'm feeling overwhelmed, I'm feeling overwhelmed, or it does no good to say, why, why are you letting this happen to me and my family? Why are you letting this happen to my friends who are such good people? Why just cast doubt? We know and we trust that God has a plan that it is infinitely better than our own and that at times it's going to be painful. Jesus tells us that if we want to follow him, we're going to have to pick up our cross. So when we have those moments that we are feeling overwhelmed, instead of having that negative self-talk that just kind of feeds your feeling of stress, you've got to say affirming things. You have to remind yourself of the promises that Christ has made to us through Scripture. Instead of saying, I am overwhelmed, we can say, I can do nothing without you, Lord, but... I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But the truth is that life hurts. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. If life was uh, comfy cozy all the time, then we would become complacent and we wouldn't spend as much time on our knees. And being on our knees draws us closer to the Lord. Um, if everything were smooth sailing, we wouldn't long for heaven, which is where we really belong, our eternal home. You know, in this life, our society teaches us that suffering should be avoided at all cost. You know, people say things like, well, you know, if God loves me, wouldn't he want me to be happy? Well, yes and no. <laughs> God does concern himself with our physical well-being, our mental well-being, but most especially with our spiritual well-being. If some dif discomfort, uh, some frustration, some pain, some trial in this life is what is needed to ready our souls to be with God for all eternity, to um, make us become more holy and more dependent on Him, then suffering is not a bad thing. C.S. Lewis reminds us that avoiding pain is not a divine response. In fact, the divine response to human suffering through Jesus Christ was for him to come to earth in the form of that baby and to totally immerse himself in the sufferings of this life and then ultimately the suffering on Calvary on the cross. So true love, the love that Jesus has for us, stretched out his arms on the cross and said, I love you this much. I am willing to suffer immeasurably for you. Your soul is worth it. The salvation of your soul is worth it. And so when we are going through our own suffering, Jesus is allowing us to pick up our cross and he's saying, do you love me just in the good times when everything's wonderful? Or are you willing to suffer with me? Now that, according to Dr. Peter Kraft, is um, the relentless love that hell can never overcome.
never overcome. He says, weep and God will weep with you. We need to remember that in our suffering, we are never, ever alone. I'd like to end with a few quotes that I find um, very helpful to me in this area of um, the human condition and suffering. Now, I don't know who wrote this one, but I think it's very good. It says, do not anticipate the problems of this life with apprehension but rather with perfect hope in God to whom you belong. He will free you from them accordingly. He has defended you up till now. Simply hold on to the hand of divine providence and he will help you in all of life's events. And when you are unable to walk, he will carry you. Don't worry. Now, with regard to the injustices that are going on in the world right now, um, that we seem to be uh, bombarded with and worried about, this is from Blessus Titus Brandisma. Brandisma, I don't know if I'm saying it right. He who wants to win the world for Christ must have the courage to come into conflict with it. Remember, we're not meant to be comfortable here. This is not our home. If we are not in conflict with the world, then something is wrong. Something's amiss. Do not let your heart become troubled by the sad spectacle of human injustice. Even this has a value in the face of all else. And it is from this that one day you will see the justice of God rising with unfailing triumph. That's from Padre Pio. And lastly, from St. Augustine, let us understand that God is a physician and that suffering is a medicine for salvation, not a punishment for damnation. Oftentimes when we're going through a very difficult time, we feel like we are being punished by God. We are not being punished by God. What comes to us either comes to us because he wants to give it to us for the benefit of our soul, or he allows it to happen to us for the benefit of our soul or for other souls with whom we come into contact with. And it's a lot that if everything was going great in your life right now, then sorry to tell you, but they won't be great forever. On the flip side, if you're going through a terrible time right now, the good news is that it will not last forever. The one thing sure about life on this earth is that nothing lasts forever and that change is a sure thing and this also brings us good great hope especially when we're down in the valleys take courage in the lord find strength in him pray 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 and ask a friend to pray with you or for you Remember, God says, whenever two or three are gathered in my name, I am with them in their midst. Pray, pray, pray. Ask someone to pray with you and take courage because if you're down in the valley right now, good news, good news. This will change. This will not last forever. Let us conclude with prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, we surrender all of our stresses and anxieties to you. We trust in your most sacred heart. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.